In the previous episode we covered life cycles for React. Now of course uh, life cycles are used in class components and then I promised you that in the next episode I will show you life cycles quote unquote for the functional components. However, before we begin this video, I just want to warn you that the hook that we are going to be using, use effect hook, is not the exact equivalent of something like component did mount, component will unmount and so on. It does similar things, but it's not the same. And it can actually get you in a lot of trouble if you don't use it the right way, which I will show you in this video. Uh, also, I just want to read you a quote from an overreacted article written by Dan Abramov, which is called A Complete Guide to Use Effect. And I'll also urge you to read that article because you will learn everything about the use effect hook from the man himself. And the article reads, Keep in mind that the mental model for effects is different from component did mount and other life cycles, and trying to find their exact equivalents may confuse you more than help. To get productive you need to think in effects and their mental model is closer to implementing synchronization than to responding to life cycle events. So you see, uh, even Dan Abramov says that we shouldn't equate, I think that's a word, uh, that we shouldn't equate lifecycle hooks with use effect methods uh, and I will show you a few examples in this video of how you can use it but once again I urge you to read this article and you will get a much better understanding of use effect hooks. I will just do a simple uh, short video explaining some of the basic stuff and then you can read this article to cover it in more depth. So first of all, let's just create a function and call it effects. I'm going to return hello world in that function just to show it in our browser to see if it works. Okay, and now we need to add effects component into our application. Okay, save it and check it out in the browser. As you can see, it works great. Okay, so let's suppose that we are getting some kind of data from our API. In our case, it's going to be something very simple and it's going to be a list of names. Okay, so next thing I want to do, I want to set up uh, the display of those names. And first of all, I'm just going to set up the state because we are going to put those names in the state for this component. Okay, uh, so we got names, variables and set names method that we can use to set those names. And the next thing we want to do is we just want to display those names somehow. And to do that, uh, we are going to put it just in UL tag and then we are going to map over names uh, to get each name uh, displayed on the screen, right? So we are mapping through names, we define name, we define index, we use index as a key and we display the name. Great, so of course if I save this and check it in the browser, uh, nothing will happen because we still didn't set our names up because our names are currently empty array. Now, where does use effect come in? Well, use effect comes in here because you can't just go right here and say, okay, set names to be names array. Let's try it out, actually, so uh, that I can show you how React will throw a fit about that. So, set names. So, we are setting our names to be a names array. If I save this, go to the browser, as you will see, we are getting an error. Too many re-renders. React limits the number of renders to prevent an infinite loop. Great. So, this doesn't work. Now, this is where use effect hook comes in. Because as I said earlier in the intro to this video, it's an approximation of something like component did mount. It of course is not the same thing. Let me just warn you about that again. But it's a close approximation to something like component did mount. And since we are getting uh, that data from a server somewhere, we first of all need to wait for our DOM to update and for our DOM to render. And then we want to get those names and display it uh, in the DOM. 
And this is why this set names doesn't work because we didn't tell React to do just that. So when dealing with functional components, you would use use effect instead of component did mount. And then in it, you would just do set names and names array. Now, if I save this and check it out in the browser, as you can see, we are getting Jack, Jill, Tom, and Harvey. However, this is not, this is still not ideal. And I will show you why in just a second. So let's say that we want to add a simple counter to our functional component, just like we did many times before. So I will add a button that is going to set counter to be counter plus one. We already did that. I'm not going to go through it. And of course we need to define a state for that counter. And that is going to be just counter. The method is going to be set counter and the first state in it will be zero. Now, what if I want to add one to the counter once the component mounts, right? So once the component mounts, once the page displays, I just wanna immediately add one to the counter. Let's try it out. So we can use use effect and then use set counter in it. And then we would just do counter plus one. Okay, let's check it out in the browser. So as you can see, we have a problem right here because what I didn't tell you before, use effect without any parameters to it is just going to run all over again. And as you can see, we are getting warnings right here. And this counter keeps counting and counting and counting and counting. So of course, we don't want to do that. And to stop this behavior, uh, it's actually very easy. You just need to add another parameter to the use effect. And usually, uh, if nothing else, that would just be an empty array. A bit later, I'm just going to show you how use effect can actually depend on other variables in your component. But for now, let's just use an empty array, save it, go to the browser. And as you can see, now this works like expected. So once you pass in the second parameter, the use effect will actually run only once or it is going to run whenever one of the, its dependencies changes. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. So now what I want to do, if you click on a button, I want to add the number that is currently in our counter to the array of names. So we can do that in two ways. Of course, we can uh, on this button click, create a handle function that is going to do that for us. But we can also do it via use effect and you can have multiple use effects in your component, right? So we are now having this use effect and to add the number to our names, uh, we can just do it with set names and then to push something into array when using hooks, uh, you would do something like this. So what we are saying right here, uh, we are going to use set names, destructure the names array and then add that number to that array. So the number from our counter, of course, we need a dependency for it or a second parameter to our use effect. And in this case, we are actually going to set it to be a counter. So actually this use effect is going to do its thing once the counter changes. So uh, what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to comment this out because that will uh, prove to be a problem for us. And I'm just going to save this. So if I go right here in our browser, now, as you can see, we already added zero because what I forgot to mention, the use effect will always fire on component mount. And then it's going to fire every time some of its dependencies changes. So in our case, our dependency is a counter. So if I do one, then I will add one to the array two, three, four, and so on. So as you can see, you can use effect that will depend on some other methods or some other variables. And when those variables changes, then use effect will do its thing. Uh, I commented this out because if I comment it in uh, and save it, go to our browser, as you can see here, we are getting zero 
and one. Now this happens because uh, when use effect fires, when this use effect fires, it's going to set the counter to bit plus one. This use effect is going to fire also when it's mounted, so it's going to set the our names array to include zero in it. And then this will fire since this use effect depends on the counter, then it's going to fire again because this right here fired. Right, I hope that is clear. That is why we are getting zero and one in on our page right now, because those use effects fired multiple times and now we are getting zero and one. So before we wrap this episode up, I just want to show you one more thing. And that is how you can simulate component will unmount with use effect. Uh, and you, of course, sometimes need to do that. And it's very important to know. And also it's very good to do cleanups of your components when they are unmount. So let's create a hello world component. And this component is just going to display hello world for now. Uh, now, next thing I want to do is I want to make that component visible or not visible in our effect component, just like we did in the previous episode when I actually demonstrated how to use component will unmount uh, lifecycle method. So I'm going to add a button right here that is going to toggle hello world and it's just going to set the state of hello world state that we are going to add in just a second to be either true or false. And uh, by being true or false, and our hello world component is going to be dependent on that. So uh, I'm just going to add that code right here. And now I'm just going to set that state. So we are saying hello world is going to be true. And we also have this toggle hello world method, which will toggle hello world to be true or false. Let me just save this and just check it out if it works, right? So we have hello world. If I toggle it, it's going to disappear and appear again. Great. So what we want to do now is we want to go to the hello world component. And first of all, I'm just going to use use effect. Now, I'm going to use it without any dependencies or without the second parameter. And it's just going to console log out hello world. Now look what happens. Nothing too extraordinary, but I just want to drive this point home. So if I save this and go to our browser and uh, refresh it. Okay, so we are getting hello world actually three times, right? So if I refresh it again, you get it three times right here. So this use effect hook fired three times for some reason. And after the third time, uh, because probably this page, actually this component was re-rendered three times. And now hello world is actually also rendered three times. And this is this is probably happening because in use effect, we are rendering it once, twice. And then since this depend on depends on the counter three times, and then we are getting hello world three times right here. But if I add an empty array here uh, to be a dependency of our use effect and save it, now we will get hello world just once because react already knows. So, okay, we set this up, nothing has changed in this component and now we can just display hello world. Okay. Now I want to show you how you can simulate component will unmount. It's very easy. Actually, you just go to this use effect in our hello world and in it, you would return another function, which we are going to call cleanup. And that function is going to do something when the component unmounts. And in here, I'm just going to cause log out goodbye world. Okay, now we save this. And as you will see, this would act pretty much the same way like, like the example from our previous episode where we were learning about component will unmount. So if we go to the browser and now, okay, so this is hello world. It shows just once when the component mounts. And if I click toggle hello, as you can see, we get goodbye world. And now if I click toggle hello again, we are getting hello world. Goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello. Now this works as expected. So as I said, this was just a short primer of use effect hook and how you can use it 
and how you cannot use it or you shouldn't use it. Uh, as I said two times before this, please read that article about use effect hooks from Dan Abramov because it's going to give you a much more depth into understanding how use effect works. So anyway, this has been it for this video. Remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.